Here we have the Asus Vivo Book. This is our second Vivo Book that we are reviewing. It is the new 2020 version. And is this the ultimate economy computer? Well, let's find out. So this here is the Asus Vivo Book equipped with a 15.6 inch full high definition screen, a what some would consider paltry four gigabytes of RAM, a 128 gigabyte solid state drive, and Windows 10 S. Now these all seem like kind of weak specs, but really they're not so bad. See, Windows 10 S can be upgraded to Windows 10 Home for free. All you have to do is go to the App Store and like kind of enable it. You don't have to just use the built-in App Store apps from Windows 10. You can download anything from the internet or external apps and it'll be just fine. In terms of upgrading the RAM on this thing, that's easy enough to do. It comes with four gigabytes of RAM standard and that is upgradable to, uh, you can basically, if you're willing to take off the bottom of the laptop, you can pop in another eight gig stick in there and give yourself a little bit of extra RAM breathing room if necessary. But again, for most people buying this computer, I'm not sure that you're going to need to do that. But at the end of the day, this computer isn't meant to be a speed demon. It's meant for people that don't wanna spend a whole lot of money. This computer costs $299, and it gets you get quite a lot of bang for your buck there. So with the 15.6 inch screen, again, you get a full high definition screen, and there are a lot of laptops from both Lenovo and Dell that still don't come with the full high definition screens in their entry level packages. And even though four gigs of RAM may not seem like a lot in today's day and age, the fact is, is that most people probably aren't gonna be using a whole lot more than that. And again, if you are, you can certainly upgrade. 128 gigabytes is more than enough space for people that are just doing things like Word documents, PowerPoints, and email. And that's basically what this computer is for. This is just a productivity laptop, nothing more, nothing less. It's not meant to edit on Photoshop. It's not meant to game. It's not meant to do anything crazy or ultra powerful, video edit, audio edit, any of that stuff. Although you probably could, but be that as it may, it is just meant to be a little economy computer. This is fantastic for nonprofits. It's great for students and it's awesome for Maybe your grandmother that doesn't need anything too fancy or powerful and just needs something simple to communicate with on either Zoom or Skype. And that's where this computer shines. See, it has a built-in webcam at the top. It's got two microphone array at the top as well, so the sound quality is decent enough. The keyboard is an absolute pleasure to type on, and it does have a full-size number pad on the right there. And the trackpad has a built-in fingerprint reader if you wanted to use Windows Hello. It also is very accurate, and you're not going to be swiping around and hunting and pecking at things on the screen. It really is a very nice trackpad, especially for a laptop at such a low price bracket. Now, it doesn't come with a touch screen, although the Vivo books, the Vivo book first off has a huge series of laptops. You can, anything from $299 up to like $1,500, you can price these things out. So this one doesn't have a touch screen, although of course it can be optioned with one. We did numerous tests on the battery and you should expect to get somewhere between the five hour range, depending on what you're doing and in terms of screen brightness as well. And you have a Ryzen 3 processor as well as Ryzen, or I'm sorry, the Vega graphics to accompany it. And that'll allow you to watch 4K videos online as well as view your pictures and movies and stuff that are sitting on the computer. Input output on this thing includes two USB 3 ports, a USB C port, a USB 2 port, headphone jack, HDMI, and uh, of course, obviously where you plug it in for power. And that's most, that, that's enough input output, uh, out, input output, Jesus Chase, that is enough input output for most people. You know, again, if you, if you need extra storage to put either photos, music, whatever it is on, you can certainly get yourself a nice USB-C external hard drive, and this thing will blaze along with your extra storage capacities and capabilities. Man, I'm having trouble talking today. So would I recommend the Asus Vivo book? Absolutely. This is not meant to be a computer for the masses. It's just meant to be a little eco laptop and it is probably one of the best ones we've seen. This is really sort of a competitor for Chromebooks and Chromebooks are, I don't recommend them, I don't like them. They're not very good, but this is a very, very great laptop and it's running, uh, it can run the full version of Windows 10. It's fast. The 128 gigabyte solid state drive is a flash storage drive, so it's nice and quick. And again, that is upgradable to 256, 512, one terabyte, and for not a lot of money either. We put this thing through the ringer in terms of tests and, and frankly, for most people, this thing did quite well. You know, for anybody that's just looking to have a ton of Chrome tabs and, and Firefox tabs open while sort of doing like schoolwork or kind of a busy productivity work, this laptop is gonna do just fine. Another notable feature of the Asus Vivo book is once you pop the lid of the laptop, the keyboard kind of pops up to create a more ergonomic typing experience. And we have to say that even though it might be kind of a gimmick, it is a very comfortable laptop to type on. And just all in all, the laptop feels good in the hands. It's got good solid materials, it's light, it's thin, and 
you know, frankly, you could probably travel pretty easily with this thing. It's got a small profile, so you can throw this into a bag, pop it in a backpack, take it from home to work, travel around an airport with it, and it really wouldn't weigh you down or get in the way. It's um, all in all, it's just a good feeling machine in the hands. Another few notable mentions is that the keyboard is backlit, which is a nice touch. The computer, when it's not under load, is very quiet, and even when the fan is ramped up, it's still not obnoxious. The computer is very fast to boot up. Speakers are decent quality for laptop speakers. All in all, it's a great little peppy machine. It's uh, Think of this sort of like the Honda Civic of laptops. It's going to be reliable, and if you want to put a big old loud muffler on it, you could. Although, why would you want to? So would I recommend this computer? Absolutely. I'd recommend it to students, nonprofits, and anybody needing a little cheap eco laptop, like my grandma.